If you've been keeping up with development news, you'll know that there's been some debate around tooling, specifically whether TypeScript should always be used or if there are some use cases where JS doc is better. If you want to know what all the fuss is about, go check out my last video where I talked about how some developers, including the Svelte team, are shifting from TypeScript to JavaScript with JS doc for various good reasons. Now, if you haven't already watched that video yet, go check it out. Today, we're going to dive deeper into the world of JS doc as a type checker. We'll explore how to set up and use JS doc in your JavaScript project, along with some tips and tricks. Now, JS doc was initially released in 1999 making it a tool with over two decades of history in the JavaScript ecosystem. It was one of the early tools designed to improve JavaScript code documentation and has evolved significantly since its inception. Now, before we dive into the specifics of using JS doc for type checking, let's take a moment to understand what JS doc is and what it can do. JS doc is a markup language used to annotate JavaScript code. These annotations provide a way for you to add metadata to your code, which can be used to generate documentation. Here's an example of what it can generate just by using JS doc annotations throughout your code. It can also provide better IntelliSense and type check your code. And that's specifically what we'll focus on in this video, how to use JS doc for type checking in your JavaScript code. Now, if you want to see a full video on how to use JS doc to generate documentation for your code base, let me know in the comments below. Now let's compare how a function would look in TypeScript versus JS doc. So if we have a simple add function in TypeScript, we would declare the first parameter a as a number, the second parameter b as a number, and it's going to return a number. In JS doc, we would add all of that to a comment above the function. JS doc uses tags to annotate your code. These tags are placed in multi-line comments above the code that they're documenting. Now it's important that you open the comment block using two asterisks, otherwise the JS doc markup will not be interpreted. Each tag provides different kinds of information about your code. For example, the param tag is used to document the parameters of a function. The returns tag is used to document the return value of a function. And the type tag is used to document the type of a variable. Also notice that there is much more explanation in the JS doc example. Again, JS doc was created to aid in documentation of code bases. So we have at the beginning a short description of what this function does. Then we have descriptions of each parameter and value. Of course, this is a very simple example, but you can see how useful this could be in a really complex code base. So we all know that types are great. Uh, they can help us to catch bugs before they become a problem. But why JS doc instead of TypeScript? The main reason is because you're just writing plain JavaScript with comments. There's no compilation step required, meaning that any JavaScript engine can just run this. And this can make development faster in some use cases, such as building a library like Svelte, where the compilation step can get in the way. Now, while JS doc can do a lot more than just type checking, for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be focusing on using JS doc for type checking in conjunction with TypeScript. If you didn't already know, TypeScript natively supports most JS doc types. And here's a link that you need to bookmark. It's the TypeScript handbook and specifically the JS doc supported types. So now let's dive into how we can use JS doc for type checking in our JavaScript projects using TypeScript. All right, let's set up a new JavaScript project. We're going to be using Node.js and NPM node package manager. So make sure you have those installed on your machine. If you don't already, you can download them from the official Node.js website. So I have an empty directory here in VS Code. I'm going to type npm init-y to get us going. And then we're going to npm install as a dev dependency TypeScript. Now you might be asking, why are we installing TypeScript? Well, again, TypeScript natively supports most JS doc types. And if we're not specifically trying to generate documentation, we don't actually have to install JS doc. So now let's create a ts.json file in the root of our directory. And we're going to set compiler options. We're going to set allow JS to true, check JS to true, and strict true. This is going to tell TypeScript to check our JavaScript files for type errors. And this is all we need to enable JS doc in a TypeScript environment. Let's take a look at some of the most important JS doc types supported by TypeScript. So first we're gonna look at the at type tag. This tag allows you to specify the type of a variable. You can use any TypeScript type, including primitive types like string, number, boolean, array, 
and object types. So here's an example of a type of string. So we're going to say my string is a string. If I change this to a number, you'll see that we get an error that says number is not assignable to type string. So we're getting great type checking here by telling it this is a string. We can do the same thing with a number, an array of numbers, and an object. Here we're defining the first property A is going to be a string, B is going to be a number. So we have a string and a number. If we have anything different, then it'll give us a type error. Next, we're going to look at the at type def tag. This tag is used to define a custom type that can be used elsewhere in your JS doc comments. So we're going to define a type definition here. It's going to be an object called point. Within this object, we're going to have a property of X, which is going to be a number, and another property of Y, which will be a number. So now we can use this. We're going to say our type is going to be point, which is our custom type definition. And then this variable, my point, needs to have an X, which is a number, and Y, which is a number. If we hover over my point, we can see that it is of type point. If we hover over point here, we can see that point needs to include X and Y, both numbers. Let's look at another example here, a little bit more real world. So this time we're going to define a type definition, which is going to be an object called blog article. The article needs to have a title, which is of string, an author, which is of string, content, which is of string, and date published, which is a date. So let's use this. So we're going to define this variable with the type of blog article. And so this needs to have a title, an author, content, and date published. We could define a union type. A union type is when a variable could have multiple types. So we're typing my string or number as a string or a number. We use the pipe character between these. So this could be a string as it is now or a number, and that's just fine, but it cannot be a Boolean. We'll get a type error if we set it to a Boolean or anything else. Another way to use a union is in a type definition. So we could say this is going to be a string or a number called string or number. And then we can use string or number here. We'll say the type is of string or number. And again, this variable can be a string or a number, but it cannot be anything else. Next, we'll look at at param and at returns. These tags are used to document the parameters and the return type of a function. We briefly looked at these earlier. So here we have a function with two parameters. We're going to define those right up here with at param. And we're going to say param1 is a string, param2 is a number, but we have param2 surrounded with square brackets. That makes it an optional parameter. And then we're going to say that it's going to return a string. So the function has param1, param2, and we're going to return param1 plus param2. And if param2 is not there, it will be an empty string. And here's another example where we have an add function, which is going to add two parameters. We're going to say the first parameter A is a number, second parameter B is a number, and it's going to return a number. And we love all of the documentation here. This is the first number, this is the second number, and this is the sum of A and B. Now let's look at the dreaded any operator in JS doc. In JS doc, we can declare a variable with the asterisk. And that means anything goes here. Now, please be careful with the any operator. Ideally, you should never use the any operator since it essentially bypasses all type checking. So what's the point of type checking? So now that we have a basic understanding of JS doc, let's look at some more examples of using JS doc with TypeScript to add type safety to our JavaScript code. As I mentioned earlier, TypeScript natively supports most JS doc annotations. This means that we can use JS doc comments to annotate our JavaScript code and TypeScript will use these annotations to check our code for type errors. So in this example, we're using JS doc comments to specify the types of the parameters and the return type of the add function. If we try to call the function like this with a string and a number, TypeScript will give us an error because the types of the arguments don't match the type specified in the JS doc comments. So we can easily see that this needs to be not a string, but it needs to be a number. And now we're good. So let's look at another example where we define a function that takes in an array of numbers and returns their sum. So we're defining numbers here as an array of numbers, and it's going to return a number. And again, if we try to call this with an array of strings, TypeScript is going to give us an error. So we know all of these need to be numbers. And we can also use TypeScript syntax with js.comments. Here's an example. So we have a variable here of calculate total price. And in our js.comment, we're going to set that as a type. And the type is going to be a function 
This function is going to have a price, which will be a number, and is on sale, which will be a Boolean, and it's going to return a number. So now we can assign a function to this variable that matches the type, and then we can do something within this function. We're going to calculate our tax and our discount if it's on sale, and then return that calculated number. So what's different here is the way that we define this type in our JSDoc comment. We're using the TypeScript syntax instead of the standard JSDoc syntax. And that works just fine if you prefer to write it this way. Now, another thing that we can do because we are using TypeScript in our project is take advantage of TypeScript declaration files or DTS files within our JavaScript files. JSDoc isn't perfect and you may run into situations where you're not quite able to define types exactly how you want. And so this is where DTS files come into play and they work nicely with JSDoc. Now, here's a very simple example here we're defining a car type in a car.dts file. So we have our make, which is a string, our model is a string, and our year is a number, and we're exporting this. So now in our car.js file, we're going to import that in our JS.comment. comment. So in this print car details function, the car parameter is expected to be an object that matches the car type, which we defined in the car.dts file. Then we have access to our car make model and year right here if we hover over this we know this should be a number uh, this should be a string and this should be a string and if we passed any other object to this function that doesn't match the car type then we would get a type error which is what we're looking for this is just a simple example but it demonstrates how you can use dts files with jsdoc to add type checking to your javascript code and this can be especially useful when working with complex objects or third-party libraries that don't provide their own type definitions. Now, you might be thinking at this point, it, this is ugly. It's just too much typing. I'll stick with TypeScript. Well, I do agree that it does require a shift in how you approach reading and writing the code. But because it basically forces you to document your code as you go, it really does make the development experience so much nicer. And you don't have to type more if you use GitHub Copilot. Now, if you're not familiar with it, GitHub Copilot is an AI-powered code assistant that helps you write code faster and with less effort. It can suggest whole lines or blocks of code as you type, making it a great tool for speeding up your development process, just like JSDoc can help speed up the development process in some use cases. Now, one of the areas where GitHub Copilot really shines is in generating these JSDoc comments. So I have a function here, and I'm going to now go up to the top of the document here, and I'm going to start typing a comment. Now I get this IntelliSense JS doc comment, and you'll see here that it's going to add a parameter with an any value for each of these, and it's not going to give me my return type. So it's really just giving me a template here, and this is built into VS Code. So this is okay to start with, but I really don't want that. So I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna hit enter here, and now Copilot is gonna start suggesting what I actually need. So I'm just going to hit tab here because parameter A does need to be a number. I'm gonna hit enter, now it knows parameter B needs to be a number, right? And my return value, yes, I need to return a number. So Copilot has really helped me out here. Now keep in mind that while GitHub Copilot is a powerful tool, it's not perfect. It's always a good idea to review the suggestions it provides and make sure that they are accurate and appropriate for your code. So in this tutorial, we've explored how to set up a JavaScript project with TypeScript and JSDoc, learned about some of the most important JSDoc tags supported by TypeScript, and seeing how we can use JS.comments to add type safety to our JavaScript code. Now for a more comprehensive list of supported JSDoc tags in TypeScript, you can check out the TypeScript handbook. It's linked in the description below. Now the choice between TypeScript and JavaScript with JSDoc ultimately comes down to the specific needs and preferences of your project or team. Both tools have their strengths and can greatly enhance your TypeScript development experience. Now remember, the key to becoming a better developer is to stay curious, keep learning, and never be afraid to experiment with new tools and techniques. Don't be complacent, and don't be afraid to give JS Docs a try in your next JavaScript project. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.